When we're getting started as composers, it's really difficult to figure out what the most essential tools are that we're gonna need as we start our journey into composing. And it's very tempting to just go out there and buy whatever the big YouTubers are using, or even worse, think that you can't get started with some of the basic gear that you already have. So in this video, I'm gonna dive into the 10 tools I use on a daily basis to compose music for the various orchestras and chamber ensembles I work with. So let's get started with perhaps the most important tool, and that's gonna be your computer. Now my computer over here is a Mac Studio with an M2 Max chip with 32 gigabytes of RAM and 500 gigabytes of storage. I bought this for about $1,800 refurbished earlier this year. Now if you want to stay in the Apple universe and not break the bank, which I can totally understand, one other possibility you can take a look at is a refurbished Mac Mini. Right now on the Apple website, I see that it's going for about $500. Now depending on where you live, you can definitely find this refurbished Mac Mini at a cheaper price, so I suggest you do your research on that front. Now I do suggest that if you're going to stay within this family of computers that you go with either the M1, the M2, or the M3 chip with at least 8 gigabytes of virtual memory with at least about 250 gigabytes of storage. Any other storage that you would want beyond that you could store in the cloud or have an external hard drive for. Tool number two is going to be your audio interface. Now your audio interface is going to act as a conduit to your computer and any other peripherals that you might have. Another peripheral I can use is a MIDI keyboard board like the one I have right in front of me. This cable here is going to be different than the cable I use for the microphone. This cable here is called a MIDI cable and I'm going to connect this directly from the keyboard into the MIDI input on my audio interface. Then the audio interface is going to relay that information to my computer so I can actually play these keyboard sounds straight into the computer. Now I wouldn't pay more than about $150 for your first audio interface as long as it has at least one preamp so one way to take a microphone phone signal and at least one MIDI input so you can connect a MIDI controller like this one to your audio interface. And depending on what computer you have, you want to make sure that your audio interface connects directly to your computer with the appropriate cable, either a regular USB cable or a USB-C cable. The interface I use, by the way, is the M-Audio M-Track 2X2M, and I've been really happy with it so far. The next tool that you're going to want to have is a basic MIDI controller like the one I have right in front of me. This is a MIDI controller made by Studio Logic. The model number here is SL990XP. Now I've had this one for over 10 years and it's been my workhorse throughout all the different compositions that I've written. Now you don't need to have a MIDI controller like this one. There are alternatives like the M Audio Key Station, which do a perfectly acceptable job. As long as they have all 88 keys, I find that to be extremely helpful. I don't want to have one of those small keyboards because I often find transposing up and down an octave to be really cumbersome. I want to have all 88 keys in front of me. And depending on if this is important to you at all, I also like to have the keys weighted so I can feel like I'm playing on a real piano. Now your MIDI controller doesn't have to have anything extraneous on it. Mine over here just has these little buttons that I don't even use. I actually cover it up with my Mac keyboard over here so I can use my monitor here in front of the keyboard. The main purpose of this is just to be able to input some kind of MIDI data that your audio interface eats up and then spits at your computer. Now the next tool I'm going to recommend has to do with how are you going to hear all this stuff that's going around us. And instead of buying a pair of expensive speakers, what I would suggest is actually to buy a pair of headphones like these. The ones I have are the Sony MDR V6, but they make a more updated version, it seems like on Amazon, called the MDR 7606. These are going to have a very flat response and really help you understand what exactly is going on in whatever mix that you're doing in your composition setup. These are going to run you about $100. The cheapest set of speakers are going to run you probably around three, four, five hundred dollars $500, and they go way up in price after that. I would actually really recommend something like this and that way if you're in an apartment or you have roommates or anything like that you're not bothering anybody with your sound through the speakers. You're just listening through a pair of headphones like these. Now to get us away from all this technology why don't we go back to basics with something as simple as manuscript paper. So I always recommend especially for all my students that study with me that you write all your initial ideas on a sketch pad like this. This happens to be Hal Leonard's Carta number 27 manuscript paper and they make it in all sorts sorts of sizes, not just the one I have right here. And I really like this paper because it actually has 16 staves all the way down. So it's really good for writing big orchestral scores. It's also really good for writing things as small as solo pieces because I can just write a couple of lines up here and then have a little system break, then have another couple of lines here, then have another system break, etc. So I can put a lot of music on this one page, even if I'm just writing a piece for a solo or a duo. And the nice thing about this is it comes in 40 pages, so it's going to be very hard for you to 
run out. The pages also feel really nice to the touch and it really feels like you're doing something more real, I suppose, rather than just kind of inputting notes into the computer. So as much as I can, I try to put all my ideas onto paper first before I start putting them into the computer. And by the way, quick sidebar to let you know that if you'd like one-on-one -on -one instruction or personalized feedback on your work, there are a couple of ways that you can do that through my website, link down in the description below. And I've also recently added a few new resources on my Buy Me A Coffee page if you're interested in pursuing any of those. Okay, back to the video. Now my next thing is actually on the floor, so I'm gonna go and get it right now. All right, so this thing right here is a godsend, especially when I'm working at night. This is the Otis LED desk lamp, which I got from Amazon. And this thing is really long. Look how long this thing is. And what this does is provides you plenty of light, especially horizontally. So when I'm working on that big manuscript paper, I actually put it right behind me right here. So you can see the light right here. And I can actually change all the colors here so I can adjust the brightness. I can adjust the temperature. So it's really good for making sure that you have the exact setting that you'd like when you're composing music. Now this Otis desk lamp does run you about $90, but an alternative idea is to get something like the white crown lamp from Amazon, which goes for about $16. And it will have that similar horizontal lamp functionality, especially when you're sketching on your manuscript paper. My next tool for you to get is this H4N zoom recorder or something similar to it. Now this is very, very powerful in that, let's say that you're having a piece performed or a piece read or a piece rehearsed, any of those things things and you want a really quick and easy way to be able to record all your musicians without having to hire an engineer or to get a studio or any of those things. This Zoom recorder just as is does quite a good job of getting a reasonable sound out of that kind of environment. And the other nice thing is that it's really quick and easy. So all you have to do is turn it on, point it in the vicinity of the musicians, hit record, and you get a reasonable sound out of it. Much better than your iPhone or anything like that. Now of course this does not in any way replace having proper microphones in a proper studio environment environment with a proper engineer. But for those of you that want to get something quick, dirty, and easy, this is the way to do it. And I've actually used this a bunch of times to record pieces, especially if I didn't know they were going to be properly recorded. Over on Amazon, they have the new version of this, the H4N Pro Zoom Recorder for around $170. And just like everything else, I'm sure you can find a refurbished or used version of that if that price point is a little high for you. Now, so far, we've been just talking about hardware, but of course, there's going to be important software that you're going to have to get to get you started as a composer. The first one I would recommend is your DAW. Now DAW stands for Digital Audio Workstation and there are many out there in the marketplace. If you get a Mac, the most logical one to get is Logic Pro, which will run you about $200. If that's a little bit much for you at this stage, you can always use the free alternate version of Logic Pro, which is going to be GarageBand, which comes standard with every single Mac. A digital audio workstation is going to be essential for you, especially if you want to record MIDI piano notes into the computer or record yourself singing like this into a microphone. It's also a really good way if you want to improvise and get all your ideas saved so that you don't have to remember what you're improvising before. And if you're not a Mac user, another DAW you can go for is a program called Reaper, which offers a 60-day free trial. Then after that, you only have to pay $60 and you have the software forever. I haven't personally used this, but for $60, I can't really think of a DAW that offers just as much for as little a price. So that would be something I would look into, especially if I had a PC. And next up is probably going to be your most important tool, especially as a composer of classical or concert music, and that's going to be your notation software. Now, I've been a power user of Sibelius for decades, and I've dabbled with Dorico in the recent past on a couple of pieces. Now, in my opinion, those are the two most professional softwares on the market, but they are going to run you a little bit of money, depending on if you choose a subscription model that Sibelius has or the one-time license fee that Dorico has. Now, Sibelius and Dorico make free versions of their software, which are actually quite capable. And of course, the most popular notation software out there these days is going to be MuseScore, which is completely for free as well. And a couple of the finalists in my recent contest wrote their piece completely in MuseScore. So definitely this can be a very professional option for you, especially as a composer that's just starting out. Now the last piece of software I recommend is a combination of softwares actually, depending on what is most important to you. So if you'd like a very strong playback engine in Sibelius or Dorico, you can use a program called Note Performer 4, which helps you create really realistic sounding mockups of your chamber or orchestral solo pieces. You can buy Note Performer for $129, which will get you access to all of these different instruments that will work seamlessly with Dorico or Sibelius. And if you're like me and you prefer to have whatever piano
piano sound that you're using completely customizable in terms of pitch, in terms of reverb, in terms of hammer strikes on the keyboard, and many, many other things, I suggest getting a software like Piano Tech, which is the one that I use currently. Now, the least expensive version of Piano Tech is going to run you about 139 US dollars, but I think it's worth every single penny. Now, at the end of the day, if you're not putting in the time listening to music, studying scores, and then following up with that by composing music of your own, none of these tools are going to help you in the long run. These tools will only help if you have the mindset to do all three of those things as you're continuing on with your composing journey. See you next time.